Hey kitties, it's Triple Feature Tuesday once again, and we continue our epic four-part series, Tom's Friends Hate Him, with Julia Roberts being a flake. They got the flakes! Uh, to remind everybody, the past bunch of Triple Features have been picked out, uh, especially by my friends, to torture me, because they hate me. And uh, it is apparently having drastic effects on my health, as you can hear, so hopefully this will be a short one. Um, Julia Roberts, I've never gotten the appeal at all. She tends to play the same flighty type of quirky girl that you just can't help but love, but I don't. Uh, but everybody else does, seemingly on the planet Earth, so... Who am I to argue about that? I tend to not bring them up. I tend to not bring up any of these people uh, if I don't have to because I don't like focusing on things I don't like. But hey, this is what we're here for this week. I will say I did enjoy her in um, Ocean's 12, which ironically is a movie that like me and two other guys like. Everybody else seems to hate that one. I think it's brilliant. Uh, but I, I, I'm a sucker for people uh, making fun of themselves in movies, or, you know, poking fun at the very least. And I thought she did a pretty good job at that, at uh, Tess Ocean, having to pretend to be Julia Roberts and making, you know, minor ribs against the Aaron Brockovich movie. So... Our menu is going to include I Love Trouble, uh, Runaway Bride, and Eat, Pray, Love. I've got on record, I don't particularly like Nick Nolte either, so this one was really exciting to watch. Uh, you know, the real problem with this movie is uh, it's, made, it, it's a throwback movie uh, made for a different time. Like, if this was a Tracy Hepburn movie, or a Cary Grant and anybody, or Cary Grant and Clark Gable and anybody movie, this movie would have worked. Probably really well. Well, if you had cut like a half hour out of it, because it just kind of ran long. But Nick Nolte and Julia Roberts are rival newspaper men who uh, end up uh, trying to outscoop each other on the same story. And over the course of running all around the country, they fall in love and hooray. It just doesn't work. I, I'm in the my, in the majority of people that think it doesn't work, uh, including Nick Nolte and Julia Roberts. Nick Nolte would later describe uh, the feeling of making this movie as selling his soul, and uh, this was uh, apparently not uh, did not go unnoticed by uh, Julia Roberts, who said that Nick Nolte was the worst actor she's ever worked with, which is sort of funny. Uh, I was excited for like a few seconds in the beginning where we see. Uh, Clark Gregg in what I assume is the first iteration of uh, the Phil Coulson life model decoys. Uh, unfortunately, he dies off screen pretty much instantly. But dude, it's Clark Gregg with as much hair as he's ever going to have, wearing uh, the whole black suit, black tie, white shirt outfit. Um, and then you're just in trouble watching the credits when you see what is just a parade of... Uh, uh, character actors. When, when your third lead is Saul Rubinick, you're just like, oh no. And uh, he's followed by uh, James Rebhorn, Robert Loja, Charles Martin Smith, uh, Dan Butler, an equally, or no, he's a much worse follically challenged fellow than Clark Gregg, uh, but he was there. And um, it just, it goes, I, I guess it's not long so much as you know every joke that's going to happen at least until the the bar scene with kelly rutherford who i will always love because i will always love anybody that was a regular on briscoe county jr uh she was Ms. dixie cousins kind of the, the cat woman for uh, briscoe county's batman but uh the bar scene is quite ridiculous where she basically presents herself to nick nolte like something out of national geographic <laughs> which uh, it just got embarrassing for a lot of different reasons. But I have to admit, I didn't hate Nick Nolte in this movie because he at least appeared to be attempting to play a, a character that wasn't just the gruff Nick Nolte stereotype. But I guess that's... I guess him playing anybody other than himself is him selling his soul, so I don't know what the... I don't know what you're supposed to make of that. So Julie Roberts ends up married... Uh, or in some state of marriage in all of these movies, so I kind of just string my head can and I'm stringing her along as just an increasingly flaky woman uh, who is getting more gaunt 
and skeletal as the years go on. So after her marriage to McNulty doesn't work, she proceeds to uh, go on a string of failed almost marriages in The Runaway Bride, which was supposed to be a big thing because it reunited Richard Gere and Julie Roberts, who were, you know, the super-duper romantic comedy, or at least romance, uh, couple after Pretty Woman. But no one, no one seemed to like this movie pretty much at all which is fair, because it's it's dull. Much like with the Sandra Bullock, uh, Julia Roberts kind of locked on to a formula that works for her, and as a result, all of her movies seem to follow this formula. I think it's very predictable and boring. But Julia Roberts is the titular runaway bride who has left uh, three grooms at the altar. Richard Gere is another newspaper man uh, who wrote a surprisingly factually inaccurate uh, story about her, despite her uh, still claiming that she's ridiculous. He gets fired, and then uh, he gets a shot at redemption about writing a longer article about her that's factually correct, and proceeds to basically stalk her uh, all around uh, the town she lives in, which is in rural Maryland. Uh, Hale, Maryland. I'm not sure if that's a real place, but uh, it's always fun to see Marylanders portrayed as uh, basically one step removed from country bumpkins. I guess I guess we have, ooh, there's no mid-ground for us, I guess is the problem. We're either like the scum of the earth and homicide or the wire, or we're, you know, uh, south of the Mason-Dixon line Hicks. I don't, I, I don't see why we can't have, you know, or the fairly cosmopolitan Marylanders like myself. But anyway, uh, it's borderline creepy. Uh, I know he's supposed to be a reporter, but it's sort of like paparazzi reporting, where you're, you're just really invading this person's uh, personal life, which seems kind of wrong. But you're supposed to, like, wave it off because it's uh, Richard Gere, who, I, I, uh, I'm sad to say, falls under the category of Nick Nolte and uh, Julia Roberts, uh, people I've never cared for. Uh, my one exception is Primal Fear, but I mean... Primal Fear was just a perfect movie, but Richard Gere has never really done anything for me, and so his little, you know, cute, roguish thing uh, doesn't work as much, because he's just not tough enough to pull it off for me. He just, he looks like he'd crumble like a house of cards. But anyway, he had some really good performances by Chris Maloney, because... Uh, who, you know, Chris Maloney is just a chameleon. You can, you, he has been in almost every movie you've ever seen uh, as radically different characters. Like, there, there, there's, there's like two levels of different to Chris, the characters that Christopher Maloney plays. There's the characters that are hilarious when you remember that uh, his long, his, one of his longest running parts was the uh, sociopathic uh, rapist slash murderer Chris Keller from Oz, and then he's playing, you know, uh, whatever his character is on Law and Order Rape, uh, excuse me, Law and Order SVU. And then there's just the complete whacked out stuff. I have this feeling that he just needs to play weirdos, like uh, in Harold and Kumar, uh, he plays uh, the, the tow truck driver, uh, he's Sven, the over-the-top homosexual in Terry Gilliam's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And he, he, or he's in that Wet Hot American Summer movie as some deranged uh, camp chef. He's just, he's got, he needs to uh, release the crazy every couple of years. And we're always happy. This is a fairly tame Chris Maloney, but he still adds, you know, the uh, necessary amount of uh, quirks to his coach character, and I, I appreciated it. Uh, actually, all of, or most of the grooms, there's like the, the, the most recent failed groom is sort of a cipher, but the other two are uh, Donald Logue and Yul Vasquez, two actors that you probably don't know the name of, but you've seen them everywhere, and they're always a delight. Uh, equally wonderful, Joan Cusack, always a fan, always happy when Joan Cusack shows up to add just a little bit of weird... But about the plot, I mean, it just it goes the exact way you think, where it's just a, a woman who is too afraid to grow up and uh, really look at herself and decide what she wants, so she keeps glomming onto men. But of course, once she meets Richard Gere, now it's time to really get her shit together and marry him for real, because they're perfect for each other. I guess. 
But in my head canon, it didn't last too long because in Eat, Pray, Love, she is in a failing marriage to Billy Crudup. And uh, it's failing mainly because he, Billy Crudup, is sort of a non committal, dreamy loser, slash, Julie Roberts' character won't actually express in any way her dissatisfaction with the marriage in any sort of productive way, uh, which I was glad was pointed out uh, later in the film. So, E. Pray Love, here's the thing I am neither a foodie, I, am, I, I consider myself agnostic. And uh, romance hasn't really been treating me right the last couple of years. So if you could have picked a movie more diametrically appro opposed to my interests at this point in my life, I would love to see it just to see how much I would hate it more than Eat, Pray, Love, which is just self-indulgent and terrible. Uh, Julia Roberts, she gets out of the marriage, or not gets out, she divorces him and uh, immediately shacks up with James Franco because uh, she's got Sandra Bullock disease and that she needs to be with a man. But then when, you know, James Franco's young uh, Hindu uh, lo uh, actor uh, Flake character doesn't work out, she decides, you know what, I'm going to take a year off to devote to me because her whole life hasn't been completely self-obsessed up to that point and uh goes on a trip or uh, not around the world but she spends four months in italy eating uh four months in india praying and four months in bali supposedly under the guise of loving herself but you know finds romance in the end it's a well shot movie it, it is really nice to look at because a lot of it plays like a travel log, and there's a bit of uh, cultural immersion in the Italy, uh, India, and Bali that's actually very satisfying to watch. Unfortunately, it's all through the lens of this woman who's just obsessed with herself, which gets, I mean, I guess it could work for you if it was an actress you cared for, but because I have my issues with her, it doesn't really play well at all for me. And it's, like, at the end of the day, it's very trite. And it's long. Two, uh, Eat, Pray, Love's two and a half hours long. Two and a half hours! That's not even the longest movie I'm going to have to watch. Oh my god, next week, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm already sick. Mercifully, towards the end of the film, Javier Bardem uh, becomes the eventual love interest that she settles on. It, it's always weird how, like, when you, find, when you discover who you're supposed to be, you magically find... The person you're looking for, which, um, yeah, no, not so much in real life, or at the very least not for me. But Javier Bardem, just a delight, and he is, uh, well, it, it, one, it was just fun, because most of the movies I see him in, he's playing some sort of bad guy, and he's just the complete opposite of that. He's just very lovable and full of uh, happiness. And uh, he just brings uh, an off-the-beaten-path uh tone to any character he does and that's always just a welcome respite in movies that are so generic and formulaic so julia roberts the flake needs a man uh until the man isn't the man she wants anymore and then she goes to the next man i feel sorry for javier because you know i have no belief that, that this romance is going to last any more than any of the others but anyway, I Love Trouble, which nobody on the planet Earth liked. Runaway Bride, which I think the Julia Roberts devotees liked, but nobody else did. And Eat, Pray, Love, which I gotta believe most people were... I mean, just the length of the movie alone turned people off. Uh, next week is the last installment, at the very least, of this year's edition of Tom's Friends Hate Him, in which I dive face-first into the beef and uh, will probably kill myself after the video is over unless I don't die of illness first so I'll see you then